I can't breathe. There's polyfill in my mouth. <laughs> sorry. Okay, sorry. I'm putting some glue on the dowel itself. Son of a <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Welcome to the workshop, everybody. Today, we're gonna make stuff. And in order to do that, I'm gonna bring in my good friend, my co-author, my co-conspirator in Catdom, and that would be Kate Benjamin. Kate, by the way, when I say co-author, wrote two books with me, Catification and Catify to Satisfy. Both uh, I consider, well, you know, it's me saying this, but these are the environmental enrichment Bibles out there. If you wanna make your home better for your cats, uh, that's where you start. And speaking of starting, Kate, welcome, let's begin. Thanks for having me. The last time we did this, just as a reminder, I did glue my fingers together. Yeah. Oh my God, I've been in here for two <laughs> seconds. Hold on. I'm all, uh, damn it, damn it. <laughs> It's like an out of control pizza. But I assume that we're doing stuff here that might be Jackson proof, yeah? Hopefully. Well, a few. We'll start with, is your hot glue gun warming up? Uh, okay. Yes, of course it is. <laughs> so tell me what the first thing we're doing. All right, so the first one is about as easy as it gets. This is a sock kicker. So grab your sock. Do you have a sock? I got a sock. Oh. Am I done? You're gonna need a sock, a pair of scissors, some catnip. Wait, wait. You've got some loose catnip? Not only do I have catnip, but I have our collaborative Jackson Galaxy brand organic U.S. grown catnip. Ooh. That is the best catnip. Um, you need some polyfill and some brown paper. I have all my ingredients. Start stuffing your sock. We're just going to do this one super simple. We're going to leave the toe on and you're gonna take a handful of polyfill and push it all the way down to the end. Polyfill in the toe. And grab a little bit of the paper and crunch it up. And this is gonna add kind of a texture and a sound. I can't breathe, there's polyfill in my mouth. <laughs> sorry. Okay, sorry. You could also use like crunched up plastic um, shopping bags, something that gives that texture and that sound. And now you wanna sprinkle some catnip in there. So you kinda of want the catnip to be distributed throughout. So this is the this is the part where I can turn into Wreck It Ralph. I'm gonna go for a whole <laughs> lot of catnip. We got catnip, we got polyfill. Repeat the process. Got it. More polyfill. This is sort of like making a seven layer dip, isn't it? Mmm, seven layer dip. End with the polyfill. More polyfill. But make sure that at the end you've got polyfill so the catnip's not falling out the end when we close it. Now I've got about this much left in my sock. Perfect. That's good? Okay. Yeah, about three or four inches at the end. What we're gonna do here is super simple because this kind of this fluffy sock works really well for this. So grab your scissors and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut straight down about three inches or to the top of where your filling ends. And you're gonna go all the way around cutting strips that are about three quarters of an inch wide. So see that there? We're going to basically cut fringe. Oh, I see. So you have fringe cut all the way around. All right, now grab two that are opposite each other and tie them in a knot and pull it really tight and then tie a double knot on top of it, okay? So two opposite each other. Take two others that are opposite each other, do the same thing. Okay. And you're basically sealing it off. That looks good. So now it has this kind of fun fringe on the end, and that was super simple, right? That's it, that's a kicker. Okay, yeah. So I, you can also, if like I, I made one with a much longer sock, so in this case, I cut both ends. I cut the toe off. And then look at this. I made a tiny one with just the foot. You got socks that you're about to sort of Salvation Army and you wouldn't, you're going, does anybody really want these? Cause they're really nasty. Your cat does. So for this one, you need a piece of fleece, a 12 inch long quarter inch dowel or something similar. Well, it just so happens that I do have a 
quarter inch or so 12 inch dowel sitting Perfect. at the studio. I, you know, I was looking for one and I was like, well, there's a 12 inch dowel. Okay, sorry. <laughs> All right, you need some ribbon. Um, about an inch wide. You need a piece of ribbon. We're gonna use this in a very safe way. You need a lighter, some scissors, and maybe a ruler unless you wanna eyeball it again. And a glue gun with glue sticks. You said a glue gun, right? I just, I'm a little psychologically and physically scarred from the last time we did a glue gun, but I mean, <laughs> I know it's safe for most people who are not me, so. Find the stretchy direction and the less stretchy direction. Yep, stretchy side to side, less stretchy to up and down. Okay. Now, you're going to cut half inch about strips, but you're not going to cut all the way across. You're basically gonna make this, like a hula skirt. And then you're gonna leave about one inch at the top or the width of your ribbon. Man, I'll tell you what, you don't realize how not straight you cut until you're kind of under the gun. This is kind of a cheater thing, this cutting mat. It has a nice grid on it so that you can kind of follow it. Okay, I've got my little grass skirt vibe going on, okay. All right, looks like that. Put that down sideways, grab your wooden dowel, and here's what you're gonna do. You're going to put a little bit of hot glue on the very edge of that top part. Just a little dot of glue, yeah? Put a strip. So what you're doing is you're attaching the dowel to the top of the strip. So that's securing it. And now we're going to continue gluing and putting a little more glue on the other side of the dowel. And you want to kind of use it sparingly, otherwise it will squish out and, and you want to avoid that because that's when you can get burned. Okay, all right. So, so you see what's of, happening there? I'm putting some glue on the dowel itself and then just roll, yeah? I like to glue the whole way. So I just keep putting, you, you can put a strip of glue down like this. So there, this time, I put glue all across the top section about two inches. And now I can roll because you want to kind of glue a little, roll a little, otherwise the glue might cool and then it won't be sticky. Okay. Don't burn yourself. I'm working on it. <laughs> and then all the way to the end. I'm kind of seeing it come together here. And I mean, once the glue is in, I mean, I'm sure we're gonna get questions about, is the glue toxic or anything like that? I mean, obviously you don't want your cat eating a whole bunch of it, but if they were to, it's really just kind of a plastic that ideally would go right through their system, but we're not using it in any way that they're going to be able to get to it. Son of a <laughs> Nothing. I hot. Can it get bleeped? <laughs> to a certain degree, it's nice to be battle scarred. You know, it just shows what you're willing to sacrifice for your cats. The ribbon is gonna add a little decorative element and it's also going to hide any mistakes you just made at the end there if glue came out. So take your ribbon and cut off a piece that's four inches. It's one inch wide, but cut a four inch long piece of it. One, two, three, four. <laughs> We're gonna call this four inches right here, okay. Now this is where you need your um, lighter because this ribbon is made out of polyester and it will fray. So you just take your lighter and very carefully and quickly run it along the edge of both edges of the ribbon and that will seal it so it doesn't fray. Real quick, quick, set it on fire. Okay. okay. All right, get to both ends and then that's nice and sealed so it won't fray. Okay. Now we're going to take that piece of ribbon and we're going to hot glue it around that base again to add a little extra element of decoration, but it also gives it a little extra support. I would start with a little bit of glue on one end of the ribbon. Oh. And then put it down and give it a couple seconds to dry. So now your ribbon is attached. Um. I'm just, I'm out. Oh! 
Oh. <laughs> do you want it covering the bottom of the felt? Is that what you're trying to do? Yes, yeah, so it's going right here, right along that strip where the fringe is all connected. Just a little bit of adaptation here. That was a good adjustment, Jackson. Well, yeah, I bet you mine's not remotely as good looking as yours. L let me see yours. See yours? It, In the camera. Yeah, mine has a little bit of a, uh, that thing going on. Uh, yeah. It's holding together, right? It's oh, not you know, it'll hold apart. together just fine. And there you have it. All right. What we got next? How about a puzzle box toy? There ain't nothing like a good puzzle toy, man. I've got it all laid out in front of me already. Tell me what we're doing here. So all you need is a shoe box of some kind. So this is all easily recyclable stuff. A shoe box, some empty paper tubes. So toilet paper or paper towel tubes or a combination. Um, you might need some scissors if you have paper towel tubes like I do, and you need your glue gun again. So oh. you can use any size box. Like you could just do a small one of these with a little box. Okay. So basically what you're going to do is you're gonna take all of your tubes and place them into your box. What I like about using the bigger paper towel tubes is that you can cut them. And now you have <laughs> different height. If, the, if they don't go together perfectly, meaning like there's a little bit of space in between each, or do you need them to go together perfectly? If they don't fit in there tight, that's what the glue is for. So like in this case, these are in here pretty tight. I might not have to glue these down, but in your case, you've got a little extra room. So you wanna start putting a little bit of glue around the edge so that when you put it down in the box, it stays put. Can I also use the lid of the shoebox? Because that way mine can go different heights. Even a small lid like this, so if we have just regular tubes, then just grab your scissors and cut them whatever height you want. There, see like that? Yeah. You could just do a small, a small lid with all different height. And while I'm gluing, I would be remiss not to impress upon everybody, whether you're gonna buy them at the store, whether you are going to make them here or a combination thereof, seriously, do not waste the opportunity to use puzzle toys in your cat's lives. And when I say waste the opportunity, I'm talking about the food itself. If we're gonna put treats out for our cats, make it a choice. Let's get their minds working and their bodies working at the same time. We're giving them something that they are motivated for, which, I mean, come on, it's cats, so food is it. Oh yeah, there's a lot of toilet paper roll toys. There are also variations on this where you can do like a, like a vertical one, so it's like a treat dispenser, so they walk up to it and they can poke their paws into the holes That's really and cool. there are also tons of variations on, on puzzle toys so if you wanted it to be something that was a little bit more permanent maybe something you could wash out you could use like a plastic bin and plastic tubes that come from the hardware store in the plumbing department um, you would have to use a different glue but you could have it be different colors you could have it look cool, match your decor. Um, there's, there's just so many variations. Also puzzle toys that are made by putting holes in say plastic containers, like food containers. That's another great one I've seen a lot. Okay, and that's that. Uh, let me just show you guys mine, because I mean, obviously, Kate's is going to be probably a little less Wreck-It Ralph. The great thing about these, everybody, is that not only have we shown different levels here, so you can actually get to know who your cat is in terms of where their level is. Again, these are pretty high, so in, in terms of your cat being able to dig it out, it's that combination of sort of their dexterity, the size of their mitts, um, and also age. You know, kittens are gonna be much more likely to just 
dig and dig and dig and dig and dig, but then you can adjust it to them. You can make another one that is more or less challenging depending on your cat. And then comes the fun part, which is putting treats inside them, which I don't need any help in terms of the know-how on this. Found it a good opportunity to show everybody that Kate actually makes freeze-dried meat treats, uh, which are fabulous, by the way, Kate. I'm so glad you like them. Yes, my cats are big fans. I actually have, instead of treats, I'm going to do tiny toys. So these are some of the fur corks. This is our new spider sphere. Um, so I like these tappy rolls. You can stick them down in the tubes. I'm matching Kate toy for toy. We're gonna put one of our satellites in there. Oh, that is, I mean, I'm gonna have a hard time getting that out, but we'll see what your cat can do. And uh, I would put that in one of the lower ones. I'm always kind of astounded by what you can do with stuff from around the house. <laughs> So there it is, it's fun, man. And my fingers are intact. There's products that you can get at the Jackson Galaxy store, so check out the links in the description. If you've made toys at home that you wanna show off, or if you'd like us to work on something else, believe me, Kate will come up with something and she'll make me look like an idiot while I make it. So leave those in the comments so that we make a video that you wanna see. In the meantime, go for it. Play with your cat, play with your cat, play with your cat, and you don't have to spend money. I've taken the excuse away. So get to it right now, and we'll see you soon. Light and love and mojo to you guys. Meow.